Jonathan Lemire, Ed Lou said earlier that this is one of those historic speeches that would be talking about for a very long time, that historians would be writing about. We look back and see what LBJ uh, said in, in March of 1968. This is one of those speeches as well. Uh, and uh, But I've got to say thematically, just beautiful. And the, again, the sort of speech I would love to hear from a Democratic president, a Republican president, an independent president, talking about the power of America being in the hands of Americans. Yeah, a powerful speech and a powerful moment in history. The speech per reporting came together. Mike Donlan, one of the president's longest serving aides, uh, the main author, our friend, historian John Meacham, contributed uh, as well. Um, and this is one, look, we know this. President Biden got to this moment somewhat reluctantly. You could see it in his speech last night. He still believes he could run. He still believes he could win. He says his record and his ideas warrant a second term. But he is bowing to reality and in a very selfless act. Uh, a selfless act, one that we should not overlook, relinquished political power, saying it is time to bring the party together. The stakes are too high. The threat is too grave to risk it if people don't believe that I can still do it. So he tans the torch now, and he said it to a younger generation and to Vice President Harris, and we have seen what has been a blockbuster rollout of her candidacy uh, in recent days. But Sam Stein, um, this president not quite done yet. Uh, as Ed mentioned, Supreme Court reform on the agenda, perhaps as to what that means, perhaps a code of ethics, perhaps more. Uh, we should get details on that in the coming days. The president also mentioned the, trying to revive the cancer moonshot. He's got a major meeting today uh, with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu of Israel trying to get a ceasefire deal done. The U.S. officials say it's close, but there's still some stubborn hurdles to clear. Uh, give us your thoughts last night about what this means for this president, both th in the present, but also what it means for his legacy. Yeah, well, like Ed said, one of the things is gonna, that will determine all this is if Kamala Harris can win, right? Uh, his legacy is going to be directly tied to that. I was struck, um, like all of you, uh, by the somberness of the speech. Um, I went back and uh, looked at, uh, well, the other contrast I was struck by is with Donald Trump, frankly. Um, it, people made this observation, I think it's apt, but Donald Trump's, one of his last speeches in the White House was post-January 6, uh, in which he was talking about his refusal to relinquish power, uh, in which he saw, talked about his belief that uh, he had been robbed, cheated of his presidency, and he was holding on to power. And here was Joe Biden, um, not three and a half years later, uh, saying, I will give up power willingly, and explaining why. And I thought that contrast was just ex extremely profound. Um, and it got me thinking about what means what it means to be strong right uh, strong can be uh, interpreted in a different way for different people uh, some people view uh, strength as uh, a projection of power uh, but I think strong is willingly stepping aside knowing that you can't win and saying I'm gonna sacrifice my ambition for something larger and I think in this case that's what Biden decided to do I will say look it needs to be said he he doesn't he doesn't believe this criticism but the contrast, the other contrast is with Kamala Harris. Um, I thought Biden did look frail last night. I thought Biden did look old, and, it, and he is old. Uh, and as you've seen Kamala Harris on the trail uh, the past two days, you can just see uh, that contrast and how profound it is and what it means to Democratic voters uh, who have responded with this incredible enthusiasm uh, in terms of uh, the outpouring of donations and support. And so uh, it was just a historic moment last night uh, seeing this presidency at a crossroads. And like you, Jonathan, I am curious uh, what he does with the next six months. I don't think those agenda items you listed necessarily are practical, but he can use that often to really shine a light on things that he probably couldn't have done had he been a candidate for office. Yeah, and, and uh, Eddie, I'm, I'm, I'm struck. I'm just so struck by the contrast between what Donald Trump has said, what he's told Americans about the state of America and where America really is. And again, I'm not, we're, we're out of the the opinion air range right here and i'm just talking about facts mm -hmm. remember when he ran he said the american dream was dead just a lie the american dream's not dead the american dream has been growing uh and 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 then he talked about american carnage remember american carnage during his inauguration and when he was saying that let me repeat it again because the lie has been told so often that i need to keep repeating the truth 
that when Donald Trump was inaugurated and talked about American carnage and people pouring over our borders more than ever before and more violent, violent crime was at a 50-year low. Crime was at a 50-year low when he became president. When he became president, when he took the reins from Barack Obama and Joe Biden, illegal border crossings were at a 50-year low. And yet he was talking about American carnage and how things were horrible and how only he could fix it. Now he's saying America is a stupid country again. Mm -hmm. America is a stupid country because we're letting all of these people pour in and this is the worst. No, it's been bad. It's, it has been bad. It was bad during Donald Trump's term. It got worse during the first part of Joe Biden's term. But right now, again, you look at the trend lines and illegal border crossings are lower right now than they were when Donald Trump left office. And you so, know, again, mm -hmm. the contrast between what he says and what is true is striking. The most striking thing, though, is that he thinks he can get votes, and he obviously can, by tearing down America, by saying we are a horrible country, by saying we're a stupid country, by attacking us the same way Vladimir Putin or President Xi attacks us, by bringing us down where you heard Joe Biden last night lifting us up. That, this campaign should be about that, about the greatness of America. Right, Joe. I think uh, Donald Trump understands uh, the media ecosystem in which those statements are going to land. He's going to make this claim that America is stupid because of them, because of those mm -hmm. policies. Your life isn't what it should be because of them, because of this, these policies. So it's a way of exploiting grievance. It's a way of exploiting a sense that people can barely keep their noses above water. And when you contrast that with what we heard last night, no matter whether what you what your position on what your position may be vis-a-vis -vis Joe Biden's policy vis-a-vis -vis Gaza. No matter your position on his, his, his policy with regards to, to uh, student loan debt, what we saw was magnanimity. What we saw was a quiet statesmanship. And he asked us this question, do we still believe in honesty, decency, respect, freedom, justice and democracy that question fundamentally goes directly to what donald trump represents what he what he poses as a threat and then joe for me it was this really interesting moment because he knows that the country is really uh on the precipice as it were and get in terms of our divisions he reaches for lincoln and he reads the Declaration of Independence into the Constitution. That's Lincoln's move. So a government of the people, by the people, for the people, right? That mm -hmm. move is so fundamentally tied to our sense of every human being is equal before God, right? When we begin to think about that, we know that Joe Biden was reaching for the best of who we are as he's calling us to take responsibility for this country, for democracy itself. The contrast could not be, could not be starker, Joe.